2023, we've got our full agenda. Now I have Nicholas, Councillor Nicholas Connock, you're going to have me kind of care this morning. Thank you. Kia ora te marina, kia pakapapa tonanu te moana, hei huarahi mā tātou i te rangi nei. Aroha atu, aroha mai, tātou i a tātou katoa. Omie, huie, tātou. May peace be widespread, be like me, the sea be like green stone, a pathway for us all to stay. Let us show respect for each other, for one another, find us all together. No, Thank you, Councillor Clark. Much, much appreciate that. And uh, the councillors, I, I do remind you again that this has been live streamed and we have got members of the public out there as well. Uh, thank you, members of the public, for coming in. And also, uh, Susan Bockham, I see that you're sitting in your usual spot. Great to see you there again. Again, councillors, I just point through if there's any declarations of interest as you go through, please identify them and make it known to us. And it doesn't look like there's any apologies today. We'll move on to public forum, which there is no public forum at the present moment. So we'll move on to item 5.1, which is confirmation of minutes of previous meeting. For most people, it's on page 4. On most of the electronic world, it's on page 7. Do I have a mover? I'll move the recommend. Councillor Holtz moves. Including confidential section? Yes. Yep. So we've got uh, Councillor Holtz moves, Councillor Olsen seconds. Any discussion on that? All in favour? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Carried. We then have item 5.2 on page 12, or page 15 for those in the electronic world. Uh, again, it's confirmation of minutes. Do I move for that? Councillor Peters is moving. Councillor Harding is seconding. Any discussion on that? All in favour? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Carried. Councillors, we'll now move on to item 6.1, which is on page 14 and page 17 in the electronic world, which is the adoption. And it's also, you have a supplementary uh, page as well, which is item 6.1.1, which is the adoption of 2021-22 annual report replacement pages. Councillors, do I have a mover for the amendment and again uh, for the motion? And show, I remind you again that as this is live streamed, if you could just read it out. No, take it. Yes, I'll take it. Thank you for moving that. And Councillor Green can second. Go for it, Councillor Holmes. Okay, uh, recommendation is that the Council, one, receives the independent auditor's report, two, adopts the annual report and summary annual report for the year ending 30th of June 2022. And three, authorises the Chief Executive to make any minor editing amendments that are required. Would you like to speak to me? I think it's self explanatory. No, nothing else to say. Thank you. Any okay. discussion on the item? Councillor uh, Connock? Thank you. Um, it's good to finally get this through. <laughs> um, whilst I know it's, it's just, just uh, something I want to highlight, just I know that our reporting is in large blocks so that the overall performance let's say on page 27 for our copy 34 electronic um, goes in large stages but it's disappointing that the libraries in solid waste had a zero zero percent and not achieved in the aspects that we were after um, let alone the other few ones that were below in that space too um, it just shows that we need to up our game and improve the services or find a better way to report some of these things because I also know that in due respect to the uh, solid waste space, some of these are quite close to being achieved, but at the same time they fail because the, the level is not actually there. So it's uh, just something I want to raise. Uh, Simon, do you want to comment on this? Uh, no comment. I mean, uh, but 69% uh, of the uh, non-financial <coughs> targets were met, 100% of the financial targets were met, and uh, I agree with some of the, uh, some of the measures that are quite good. Uh, the results are quite close to the target. Councillors, this is a report on the last uh, financial year, and as Councillor Connick has highlighted, this is one of those things which has finally come through. After being audited and that sort of stuff. Councillor Holmes, I've got the concern about Holmes. Do you think you wish it? Just to bounce off the, uh, the comment made by Councillor Connor, 
you know, we've got to consider this. This is annual report that finished you know, nine months ago, and our library is under closed conditions for a lot of period of time, so it would be very different due to COVID and restrictions. So it would be very, very hard for them to make any, any matches. So we've just got to be cognizant of that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Holson. That, that is uh, just reminding everyone again that was it is for the last financial year. So. No other comments on that. No, Councillor Holmes, would you like to write a reply? No, thank you. Okay. Councillors, uh, if you move and second, all in favour? All right. Any opposed? Carried. Moving on to item 6.2, which is on page 40 or page 43 of the electronic version. <coughs> this is the draft waste management and minimisation plan 2023. Councillor Conk, would you like to move this? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Do I have a second that? Yes, I was going to move it. I guess it's like Councillor Green. Councillor Conk's got to move. You can move the second. How does that sound? Excellent. Uh, Councillor Conk, would you like to read that, please? Thank you. That the Council adopts the dra draft waste minimum. That a Council adopts the draft waste management plan. Mace Goodness gracious. That Council adopts the draft waste management and minimization plan statement proposal and summary document for public consultation commencing 25th of March 2023. It's been early morning. <laughs> and since it's been moved and second, would you like to speak again? Yes, thank you. Um, I'm glad that we're going out to consultation in this space. Uh, from hearing of the community, there is much improvement that we need to do. It's one of those spaces that nobody wants to have to deal with, but unfortunately in the situation that we have, we have to improve product stewardship from central government would definitely improve the spaces of what we would be able to do. And I've heard the concerns from staff that we are waiting for them to be able to actually improve this much greater than it actually is. So with respect to the fact that it is here, there is much to be desired of, and we need to be able to improve it further. And I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing back from the community in regards to consultation. Councillor Peters. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you for this plan. Um, I'd like to see the rubber hit the road on this. Um, I don't think we've done well in waste minimisation. We have in some areas, but in others, um, our public have noticed that we are not actually carrying through with the recycling that we should be doing. So um, I'd be interested to see people's comments on this. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Reeves, you want to... Thank you, Your Worship. Yes, I will speak to it briefly. Um, there's been a, an extremely large amount of work that's gone into this document for consultation. And I think we owe it to the public to do exactly that. And rather than us toil through here today, I would be quite happy if we were to let the public voice their opinions and then we can take that into consideration afterwards. Thank you. Nice to highlight that it is going up for consultation, Councillor Reed. Councillor McKenzie. Yeah, appreciate that. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, um, uh, that it is going up to consultation. Uh, I feel there's a lot of room for improvement in this area. Um, the vision is to minimise waste to landfill. Yet, there's 69,000 tonnes of refuse going um, that has been collected and 20% of that being diverted. So 55,000 tonnes of waste being sent to landfill annually in our district. Recycling trending is trending down from 40% of uh, refuse in 2017 to 34% in 2022. And waste is trending up. So the results are not aligning with our vision. We have, uh, this is dusting off a six year old plan. Um, it does nothing to advance efforts to achieve the vision that's being proposed. I don't think we can continue to wait for the government to act. We need to have our own ambition and initiative 
in order to achieve um, the vision that is being set out. Um, yeah, so I think there's a lot of room for improvement and I'm really looking forward to hearing what the public have to say um, and acting on that going forward in the process. Uh, from my side of things, I'm just quite comfortable that it's going out for consultation. Personally, I want to have uh, e-waste and stuff done a lot quicker, and most of the people who understand will know, me, know how much I'm very passionate about getting our e-waste sorted within our district. Because one of the biggest issues with any landfill is the fires which are caused by e-waste. Mm -hmm. So if we can remove it from the, from the landfill side of things, it makes things a lot easier and a lot better for us in our district. Um, Councillor Harding. Um, to talk with the sentiments of Councillor McKenzie and, and also really keen what um, kind of consultation engagement feedback comes around um, enterprise opportunity around the um, you know kind of demolition wastes and um, um, that could increase business enterprises as well so um, I see that there's a segment in the plan for that, but I'm really keen to see what kind of businesses can kind of be initiated at our town about the Council, can I have a question? Yes, please. On page 115, 118, I'll try it. says, how will we pay for this? And the second paragraph down, the second sentence says, where there are services with the public component, such as curbside recycling, we will provide funding for the whole green park. With the respect that we do not currently recycle recycling bins in public spaces, how is this justified saying that private bins are a public good? Yeah, that's, that's my confusion too. <laughs> Maybe we'll come out to Jim and Sue to answer that. Sorry, through the chair, would you mind? Yeah. Just so, with the He's referring to the last paragraph on page 100, uh, 115, 115, 118, half, last sentence. The question is, how is that public good when they're private and the public recycling bins are not, when they are not currently recycled? I understand there's contamination, but if this is, uh, how is a private bin a public good? Uh, I can't even find the sentence you're talking about. The last uh, sentence yes. above the banana. <laughs> Where there are services with a public good component, such as curbside recycling, yes. we will provide funding in whole or in part. Yes. Yes. But my question is public good over a private bin when the recycling bins in public places are not recycled because of contamination? Uh, <laughs> I can answer that. <clears throat> so, this is just saying that there is public good in these recycling bins. You have a concern with how it's currently operating because those bins in the public space have uh, contamination. Yes. So, perhaps out of the consultation document, we'll get feedback saying that's a real high priority, and then we're going to have to spend more money to recycle the recycling bins. So you'll just have to spend more money on perhaps rec services going on emptying the recycling bin and resorting it. And that's just something, if we choose to do that level of service, we'll pay for it. I understand. Um, my, my main question is how is that, the, the sentence that's there, public good, on private bins, how is that a public good? I don't see any reference to private bins. I don't, I don't. Such as curbside recycling. That's, that's, is that not private? I, I think it's intended as both private and uh, uh, and the bins in town as such. So, but we can um, through the chair we'll clarify that and just tag it that sentence. Yes. Okay. The motion does cover that sort of thing, but remember this is going out for consultation. And so this is the consultation document, so I just want to be clear as we're going out, making yeah. sure it is. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Olsen, something you want to add? Or? Um, it's not a question, it's, it's um, just that I'm, I'm really pleased that this, this document, you know, that this is going out for public consultation, I think that's hugely important. 
I, with what Councillor Harding said about um, enterprise for recycling, you know, construction materials, etc., is a great idea, which I have brought up in previous meetings. Um, the other thing that really um, I'd like to see is education, and again, I brought this up at other meetings. I mean, we're not going to be able to put a lot of this into place unless we educate the public on how to recycle, and I think that's huge. I think that's we need to to step up on that. Thank you. I think Councillor Olsen is referring particularly to the uh, the A and P show. Yes, yes, I am because <laughs> they taught so many people how to recycle properly. Myself, one of them. Yeah. Councillor Ben. Um, yeah, well, one of the priorities of this council in, in the new term was pride in our city, and I see it falls into this quite nicely. Um, and and Councillor Olsen brings up about education, which I think is hugely important and is hugely underdone, to my mind. Um, and and I, I think a whole series of actions are needed to change the behaviour of people. Um, you travel over the world and you see the rubbish on the side of the road, and you come home and you realise that we are no better here. There are there are cities in this country who do this way better than us. Um, we don't we don't educate our people enough to care about the environment, and we need to start. Um, we need to change the whole attitude of people towards this um, and really achieve something. So, um, really pleased to see the education in there. I think that's important. Thanks, Ben. No other comments? I think Councillor Connick, have you a right reply? Thank you. Um, totally support everyone that has, uh, has commented on this, on, in this piece. Um, and especially with the demolition waste that Councillor Hardy raises as well, um, especially when it's within our capacity, if we're able to ensure that we minimise as much possible as possible, um, and I appreciate as well with new buildings such as the Civic Centre, they've reduced a heck of a lot of waste. Um, that we do our best to improve that space as well and lead by example, for example. Um, but yes, I just wanted to talk about support for those who are already coming. So, thank you. Councillors, the has been moved to second and the road has been had. All those in favour? Uh, any opposed? Councillor McKenzie opposes. Would you like that recorded? It's carried. Councillors, moving on to item 6.3 on the advice of Arts in the Future. This is on page 118 or 121 in the electronic version. Councillor declare a conflict of interest. Councillor Cooper declares a conflict of interest. Conflict of interest. And we'll take no part in the conversation. He lose himself away from the table. Councillor Hulse, are you moving this? Or? Yes, sir. And oh, we've got Councillor Benny over here captured before Councillor Peters. Sorry, I missed that, Councillor Peters. Okay, <coughs> you, you wish it. It's probably the longest recommendation we've had for some time. <laughs> so, uh, seeing it's, it's live, I've got to read it out. The recommendation is that Council 1 endorses the art and culture benefit of Hunterhouse Art Centre, Warrior Maori Art Gallery, bring to the Wangare, the wider northern region, New Zealand, and internationally. Two, notes the trusts have followed the requirements set up in the trust deed and deed of guarantee and indemnity. Three, notes the options presented for the future Hunterhouse Art Centre. Four, approves option one as a preferred option. Five, approves the request for the remaining $1 million guaranteed held by the trust to be transferred from the trust term deposit account to a council deposit account to be held in, to be held on behalf of the trust. Six, approves the payment of $300,000 of $1 million to the trust. As per item five, this financial year 2022-2023. Seven, approves funding for the remaining shortfall of this financial year of $500,000 funded by way of an additional operational expense in the form of a grant as budget, unbudgeted spend in this financial year paid to the Trust in April 2023. Eight, provides additional annual operating funding of 100000 for the 2023-2024 financial year and work with the Trust to review and implement a financial remediation plan ahead of the long-term plan for 2024-2034. Over the page. Eight. Notes that after releasing the 300000 above in item six, the remaining guarantee is still 
one million five hundred thousand made up of five hundred uh, made up of seven hundred and fifty thousand original guarantee funds and seven hundred and fifty thousand Nati Y guarantee. Ten approves approves sorry again. Ten approves providing up to five hundred thousand to the one point five million in the 2023-2024 financial year to support Hunter Pass Arts Centre operation for any financial deficit. 11. Notes that, that the 500,000 were to be released during the 2023-24 financial year above. And item 10, the remaining guarantee would be $1 million made up of 250,000 original guarantee funds and 750,000 RDY guarantee. And 12. Council requested the trust to set request the trust to seek additional funding sources, including the external funding and implementation of the own fundraising activities. Well, thank you, Councillor Holster. Well done. Only one, only one correction. It was point nine, not point eight. You said that twice, but that's okay. Well done. Phone calls next. Right, good on you for following up. You were. So, this is a classic that. Uh, this could be a quite a short debate because basically what we're doing is following the guidelines and the safety mechanisms that the previous council put in place in case of funding shortfalls. And the previous council put guarantees in place in case it was needed, and this is purely now uh, in a recommendation here. The big point is that a lot of the, the funding covers a shortfall of funding due to lack of visitors, international visitors in particular. And it's very, very hard for the hunter bars to attract visitors when the government's got a ban on, on people coming into the country due to COVID restrictions. So, a bit of sympathy goes towards the hunter bars of trust and the just to, to seek that additional funding is not easy when you've got those adverse effects working against you. So, these mechanisms were put there as a safeguard, so it's now appropriate that this council support hunter bars and actually allows them to keep trading. And, we look forward to, to getting that international and New Zealand trade back up and getting those visitor numbers coming to our So we fully support, support it. Thank you. Councillor Hulse. Councillor Peters, I see your hands. Um, I'd like to stand and endorse uh, the words of Councillor Hulse. Uh, this project has brought a lot already to Whangarei. And of all the people that I have as visitors, the one thing they talk about is going to the Hundapasa. So us, um, there's no extra um, other than previously allowed for funding. So I think this item should be short. Thank you. Okay, uh, just, just for people of colour, just to highlight, most of those figures that Councillor Holst read out is then, if you look at page 120, it actually covers it in, in item by item where the money actually comes from. So if you, under, under, having struggled in understanding the wording that was written, the numbers are there to explain it. Okay. Any other councillors? Yeah. Oh, Councillor Benny, yes. Um, the, the, the theme for today for me is the big picture, and I think that we've got to look at the big picture in this region. Um, and, and there's a number of items today that will go towards that, I believe. Um, most of us on this council were not part of the original decision to build the Hunter Master Arts Centre. Um, and I don't propose to even comment on that. Um, but now we have the obligation that we have to assist them to succeed. Um, they have, nobody could have predicted pandemic, the cyclone, the travel restrictions, the lack of uh, the, the cruise boats that were booked to come to the city that never, that never arrived, that will start again soon. Um, so, and, and I do, the, the, the trust, I feel for them uh, and what they've, had to go through um, and it's important now that we set them up to succeed and I believe they will succeed and I think this is a, a step towards that and uh, and again I, I, I urge everybody let's make today a big picture day let's not focus on um, what the environment has given us um, and how we react to that. Councillor Olsen. Yes um, thank you. Um, I just want to record it that, and I, I, and I don't know how to put this really, but I've been against the Hundabasa from the start, that's my own personal opinion. Um, so today when it comes to the vote, I, even though I'm against the Hundabasa, I feel I have to vote 
for the proposal, simply because I feel that this is going to be an ongoing noose around our neck. So, yeah, I just want it recorded that, that I'm against it, but I have to vote. <laughs> it's, it's a bit of a... Yeah. But it's all out. Yeah, thank you. Councillor McKenzie. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate um, that the guarantee has had to be um, accessed so quickly like into um, the operating of this facility. Uh, but as others have mentioned, it is a sign of the uh, turbulent times that we've um, been going through in the last few years. Um, it is an awesome place, like it's an amazing facility and it's, um, it, it, it is definitely benefiting Whangarei and will continue to do so. Um, while it's undesirable that we need to take this action now, if you look through the other options, they are far less desirable this weekend. Um, so I think the choice is obvious. Um, we need to give this place a chance to operate to its potential in the post-COVID environment. That's a highlight. It was just really a, a statement to put on my but um, like, like Councillor Olsen, I, I wasn't really, the, the whole thing didn't really fit the cultural landscape, needed to be you know, in another country. Um, but upon taking the tour, um, it's just flipped flip my opinion so quickly because it's about the man and his journey and his journey ended up here in Aotearoa and Kururareka and he was tuturu kaitiakitanga you know he was absolutely anything that disturbed the environment you really put it back the fact that the the um the footprint um, what you, what, what, how you impact the footprint of, of uh, Papa Tuanuku, you will place on top of the buildings, and he's got that, you know, in the Devasa Museum itself, shows that wherever he goes. Hence the planting of the forest on top of the roof. So, you know, um, <clears throat> you know, it's quite complicated around um, um, where it is, the shape that it is, but understanding the person, his values, his background, his history, it's absolutely yes, flipped, as I said, my opinion on that. And um, and I guess as, as Councillor McKenzie has got the, the other options um, are not really going to help anyone in this district, really. So um, I don't really have any, any questions about it. I think we've, we've had lots of briefings and that's the position we're in today. Acknowledging Councillor Olsen's questions. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor McKenzie, you have a question? I do, and it may not be directly relevant to the motion, but um, uh, something to consider. I note that for Whangarei District residents, it's a $20 entry. And for people from outside of Whangarei, it's $25. Um, I have heard from the public that there would be interest in a year pass um, to allow people to um, repeatedly um, visit the facility, which I think is a really great thing if you have kids and you want to you know, go somewhere every time you have them um, each week. Um, sorry, sorry, Councillor. Your question is if a year pass would be considered for the moment. I'm seeing nodding at the back, um, but through Victoria, is there? <laughs> no. I need to get the answer from the first. <clears throat> so, um, so the trust are about to launch a friends membership, and the friends membership would give access to a pass to do that. So it's already in the pipeline. Councillor Oka. Ah, well, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I just wanted to, I guess, tack on, I guess, uh, to Councillor Harding's board as well. Uh, I'm conflicted as well um, around the Handabasa. My major thing, my major concern with it was the narrative around um, the Māori art gallery mostly. The, con the concern for me was that the narrative was that it was Aotearoa's first ever Māori art gallery. 
um, knowing that <coughs> just up the road is the Hihiawa Cultural Centre, which is also a Māori art gallery, so that was an issue for me. Um, but, and in regards to that conflict, I still want Hundabasa to do well, because uh, in my opinion, if Hundabasa is doing well, then, then the town is doing well. Um, so I will be supporting it still, but I just wanted to make mention that I was concerned about that. Uh, and I guess, I guess the narrative that was being pushed with that. <coughs> um, and then also, uh, as well as uh, what I, oh, sorry, Councillor Harding was saying <coughs> around um, his, his efforts, um, Hanabas's efforts to, to support the environment. And, and all I, I commend all of those 100%. And at the same time, uh, know a lot of Maori from this place who do the same every day, you know. So my thing is uh, supporting local as well. Yeah. Points that have opened there quite well, and I, I see I see some people taking notes at the back of the wall for suggestions. Uh, Councillor Jovic. <coughs> Thank you. Um, I will run against this. Um, it's a bit torn. Um, I think in terms of having 12 points on an agenda item is, is could have been made out differently. The 500,000, you know, the guarantees in place, which create some stability for the for the trust. The 500,000 is un um, unbudgeted expenses, and uh, whilst I do agree that you know we have lost some international, we're in this position because of poor mis poor management, and um, you know that's coming through from the public. In, uh, in many streams of uh, communications and and it's a continual issue and I still do not see that the model going forward I know we're going to be going to be working on it but I haven't seen anything to date to see that that will change so uh, I will vote against it just because of I think the five hundred thousand dollars is excessive because of the way that it has been run and it's, and it's been mismanaged. I hear the challenge that you are laying down to the, to the trust with your comments. Uh, Councillor Holmes. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, Councillor Yovich has stolen thunder a wee bit, um, so um, I, I'm conflicted also. Um, I think the Hunter Master is, is, is a great asset to the city uh, and, and, we, and it has to succeed. So uh, we're in a position where I feel we have to support it. Uh, however, uh, and this is where Councillor Councillor Yovich beat me to the to the uh, the punch. Um, the guarantee was set up there to provide just this eventuality, and it's being used, and I've got no problem with that. It's the unbudgeted five hundred thousand which I've got concerns over, um, which um, I've got concerns over. Uh, and I think the other thing is that clearly, if we're going to vote on this and support it, then. There has to be conditions attached to that extra five hundred thousand, um, and it, it's covered in the the motion. But there has to be a root and branch review of the business operating model for the house, because if that doesn't happen, we're going to be faced with a similar request next year and the year after. Uh, and so, in accepting that we have to support this, I would say it has to come with caveats. And for that reason, the same as Councillor Lokiovic, I will be uh, voting against it. Um, Councillor Gallagher? Um, just a question. Yes. When we come to the vote here, are we going to take this in parts? It's hard to take it in parts. Can you explain where you are? Maybe take number seven as. So you're saying take the whole lot of bar number well, seven? Well, yeah, we have a few, few councillors here that are a little bit hesitant on an unbudgeted $500,000, so I was wondering if that was... Ellen, do you, do you like to respond to that? I'm, I'm just trying to work out whether we can or whether we can't. Uh, certainly, I believe the council can. The consequences of doing so, yeah. should that not be passed, yeah. is that my understanding is the trust will become insolvent before the end of the year? Right. 
So there's no alternative funding for it. So, and unfortunately, because of the, the whole situation, we're not able to take the parts council away. Okay. Councillor Reid. Thank you, Your Worship. Very interesting subject, and I agree with a whole lot of what's been said, both for and against. Um, for me, I just I don't have any opposition to it. But I'm not actually in favour of it either. I would have preferred one of our own cultures to have had that space, but that decision was not in my hands. Um, and as we had a past councillor who used to say, this is a chocolate coated stone, and this is exactly what we've got here. This is just setting us up to be the handout people for the future, and I'm afraid I, I cannot support that. Thank you. So, so just, Councillor, I'll just speak to before I give Councillor Hulse the right reply. Um, Councillor, look, this, this is a situation that we've been, we've been put into, and we all acknowledge that. We all acknowledge that the, the difficult times out there with the international visitors, we acknowledge that. And, and when you look at the figures that have actually come through the door, that's the bit that's actually blown me away. The domestic numbers are twice what they were, they were expecting. You know, that's, that is itself is something which is really impressive. Uh, I'm glad, and I'm very, very glad that comes up and asked the question about life membership or, or um, yearly membership, uh, which I think the Trust is now looking at, which is excellent, which is a way of also dealing with that funding situation. So, and, and I've heard from a couple of councillors putting the challenge out there about funding, and I think that it's important that the challenge is put out there for the Trust to actually try and achieve that. I think that's a good challenge to put out there. But right now, if we are wanting to have a, a, a structure like this in place and also to have a attraction to continue going, this actually needs to happen as it is right now. That is the biggest catch right now. If, if we are wanting to have the attraction and we, if we are wanting to actually have uh, people coming to Whangarei and the and, and Haunt of Us have been here as one of those, one of those attractions, we actually have to support this right now. That is the catch that we are in. And I know that hurts for some, some councillors, and I know that hurts, you know, for me personally, and like Councillor Walker and Councillor Harding, uh, the cultural side of things does, did annoy me a little bit. However, we've now got building in place. And it is there as that, it is also applying attractions to Hihi Art, is applying a, an, art, an artistic loop down there. So it's actually providing more attractions to Whangarei and providing, you know, one of the discussions that I've had with people over the last uh, couple of months of being there it, it is people saying, I'm really keen to get, you know, get to see the Hunabas. I actually got told by one of the mayors down south, which, which blew me away, and he says, how did the Hunabas go? I, I'm, I'm really keen to get up there and actually see the place. So even though we, some of us may be torn with this decision. The catch is, this is an attraction for Fungo. And if we want this attraction to, to succeed, we need to actually support this agenda as it is. Whether you have personal beliefs or not, the agenda writing is written there in the best possible way for council and for the trust. And the challenge has been put down there for the trust to try and find extra funding, which I think is when the next phase, if it, if it ever happens, that's maybe when we have to have that discussion. But at this present moment, if we really want to see this event, this location to actually succeed and actually produce some evidence that all the international visitors, which I believe are coming, the borders have been opened, and we are getting a lot more international visitors coming in now. So it's a good thing on that. Now I saw a couple of hands up. Councillor Olsen, you have a question? Yes, I do. Has there been any discussion, which I, I really can't see here, that if this doesn't go ahead today, what then happens with the underbuzzer? Victoria, would you like to ask that? Through the Chair, um, if this didn't go through and we don't have a financial solution, then they will become insolvent. It won't close. So really, we're caught between a rock and a hard place, aren't we? Councillor, um, 
as much as there's difficulties with personal interests on so many people uh, within our community and around the table here, the building is here. There is much to be desired of the maintenance that we have of much of our infrastructure and our own buildings in some spaces. Also in respect why we're building a new building over there instead of redoing this one because it would cost a heck of a lot too much to build that on an old building. It's not easy to, to throw money around. It, it's not throwing money around. It's, We've had a lot of thought and consideration upon these. We've listened to people. We've had visits to actually understand them better. And that's a kind of um, you, you've got a question here. No, I'm speaking. I'm so speaking. So sorry, I, 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 I wrote wrong, wrong name down. My apologies. That's that's a, you can keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no question. Um, but no, it's it's one of those things that the building is here, and I would hate to see it turn into. Uh, actual eyesore rather than a <clears throat> spectacular piece of art that it actually is, especially for children looking out for small things on the walls outside as well as inside. Um, whilst I, I appreciate the concerns, I'm supportive of this. Thank you. I'm sorry about the interruption. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to the right reply if that's no other questions. The statements. No, Councillor Hoss, right reply. Okay, so thank you, Worship. I understand the council's, you know, focus on the, the half a million dollars, you know, contribution from council in this case. And I can understand it fully. But you get to a stage in council where you've uh, you support the good, and you uh, hopefully you don't have too much bad you got to deal with. So I just want to take you back to a few things that uh, you probably put in mind the rest of it. So years ago, we had a twin tree plan developed. The 2010 20 plan is all about how can we improve the district, particularly the city. And on the back page, there's actually a map showing you down the waterfront with a big park in this, and this was done in 1996. So it's not new. So we've been talking about council upgrade in the whole area, and in this plan, the site where the hundred of us is, or around that area where the Victorian Park is, that is where we want that an iconic building. And the hundred of us building certainly. Uh, fulfills that obligation, and, and that is all in the plan. And we've been working to do something like that for years. So, the best thing about that is, the heart of us being an iconic building, our council actually upgraded our, our status of the park, the Tau Park. We actually doubled our budget there and actually made that a really, really nice community space. Had we did not, if we did not have the heart of us building there, our, our scale and our our, our increase in the facilities in that town, that town Mason Park wouldn't be as good as what we've got today. So it's an influencer. It's, it's going back to what Kevin, Councillor Benny was just saying. We're looking at the big picture here. That is an incentivizer. It's going to attract people on great. It'll upgrade all our facilities. And Council has been brave and actually have bought into it. If you look from the Canopy Bridge all the way down to the Hunter Bar, so we're doing a very, very good job as a council. But we need to have our volunteers and our trust supporting us, and this is the first test we've had. So I'm fully for support of it, and uh, that's all I need to say. Thank you. Councillors, it has been moved and seconded. The right reply has been had. All those in favour? <coughs> Aye. 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 Sorry, as the provision has been called. My apologies. Uh, all those councillors in favour, would you please hold the right hand? Councillors McKenzie, Beanie. Connor, Defeaters, Harding, Pulse, Brooker, and Worship the Mayor. Those against? Councillors Olson, Jokic, Go Lightning, Holmes, and Reed. Are you abstaining? Motion has been carried from my point. Yes, um, his, he is here to talk to the table for that discussion. Councillor Cooper, it's nice to see you back at the table again. Thank you, Your Worship. I must say it's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> Councillor Vermeule, then we'll go to item 6.4, page 226 or page 229 in the electronic version. Do I have a chance to move this? 
Yes, I'll move it. No, Kelly Scott Bowles will move it. Well, then, Kelly Scott Bowles. It's a short one, so we can. Councillor Connell will second. Councillor Connell will vote for everything. Yeah, the recommendation is that the council one adopt the proposed policy on council appointments to outside organisations located on attachment one, and two delegates to the chief executive the authority to make editorial and typographical changes to the policy on council appointments to outside organisations if required. It's fair that it's been moved and seconded. Uh, would you like to talk about it? No, not I, really. <laughs> I appreciate the offer. It's uh, <laughs> <laughs> Councillors, any discussion on this? Right. Uh, would you like a right reply? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No. Okay, councillors, we move to the second. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? It's cast. Thank you very much, councillors. Councillors, six point five, which is on page two two so two five two or two five five in the electronic version. Which is the Do I have a move up to this? Councillor Benny, you're moving this. Do I have a second that? Councillor Hulse is second. Councillor Benny, would you like to read that? Yeah, uh, yeah, I wouldn't like to, but I will. <laughs> um, so my recommendation is one is that the council one notes the proposed development of the Aruku landing by Prosper Northland Trust and the socio-economic benefits it could bring to Fangare. Two, notes that this proposal is different to the previous proposal consulted upon within the LTP amendment, with council not responsible for constructing or owning the building. Three, notes that whilst the proposal reduces some risk exposure to council, there is still an element of operational risk through its CCO and limited detail available regarding the proposed sublease arrangement between NECT 2021 and PNT. Four, notes that government funding is only available until the end of March 2023. Five, that council approves NECT 2021 entering into lease with PNT to operate the Aruku Landing Conference Centre along with grant funding to NEC 2021 for furniture, fittings and equipment, marketing and operating if required, subject to one. Council approving at its sole discretion the conditions and terms and term of any leases to be entered into by any CT 2021, both through the current proposal and in the future. <coughs> Two, Council's grant for furniture, fittings and equipment being for up to $5 million, subject to any CT 2021 confirming costings and estimates with Council. Or two added in there. Yep. The operating grant three, the operating grant being for up to 650k per annum for the first five years of operation, if considered necessary by council based on cash flows, accounts, and projections of NECT 2021. Four, the marketing grant being for up to 50k per annum for three years, if considered necessary by council based on cash flows, accounts, and projections of NECT 2021. Five, council being satisfied following further review of the assumptions and financials underpinning the proposal. B notes that approval in principle under this option is subject to conditions being met with it being for government to determine whether this satisfies its requirements. C delegates the chief executive to negotiate and approve funding agreements and lease conditions term including but not limited to the conditions above. D notes that the funding mechanisms for Council's contribution will be determined through the 2024-2034 long-term plan. And E notes that should the further review of the assumptions and financials underpinning the proposal not be favourable, this matter will be brought back to Council by staff. Take a brief for Councillor Benny. No, that's my recommendation. <laughs> that's, that's <my> <laughs> <laughs> so, so Councillor Benny, it has been moved and seconded, and you, would you like to have to speak to that? I need a brief first. Yeah, you know, like to brief on that. No, no, look. So, so 2017, which coincides with when we first getting into council, where Aruku first uh, raised its head. Um, this, since then, we have gone through so many transitions, so many meetings and, and workshops and uh, proposals. Um, and, and I, I just note in the recommendation, so recommendation that number two notes that this proposal is different to the previous proposal consulted upon within the LTP amendment. 
with council not responsible for constructing or owning the building. So I think that's an important point to make. This is a new proposal, um, and, I, and, I, and I just can't stress that enough. And I think that on the outside, it's been brought back again that this is the same Oruku landing proposal, and this is not. Um, several issues that have arisen since then. The government is willing to put 59, 60 million into this project for this city. Um, that is unheard of when the uh, PGF funding was first mooted during COVID. This district missed out big time. We did not receive the funding um, compared to Kaifa and Far North and compared to other districts around the place. Um, this would go a long way towards evening that field. Um, Again, I, I, I mentioned it earlier in, a, in an earlier um, agenda item. Today is about looking at the big picture. While there are people, and, and I will possibly never go to a conference in this in the centre. That is, it's, it's not. I'm not doing this for me or for anybody else. I'm doing this because this has huge economic benefit for this city. It is not only a sixty million dollar build. It is um, the, the option of, or the, the, the further build of a, of a hotel alongside, and the jobs that will create during construction, and the ongoing jobs that those two businesses will provide for the city, the people it will bring. Uh, we had the, when the Lions came here, we had no suitable accommodation for the Lions to, to stay, so they went to the Bay of Islands. Um, this will allow our region to grow. The whole side of the Riverside needs to be developed. We travel to Brisbane, Sydney, anywhere else in the world, you go to the Riversides, we've developed it. One side we've, we've gone beautifully with Huntavasa, the Town Basin, Hihiawa, now we need to work on the other side. This will be the catalyst to develop that. I, um, I urge everybody to, to look at this as a different proposal than the previous proposals we have spent weeks and weeks and weeks and years trying to, to work out how to make this work. This is a new, uh, a new initiative and I congratulate Mr Sefton on how he has produced this for us. I think he's done a really fair uh, and, and great job of, of putting all the facts out there for us to vote on and I urge everybody to support this. Thank you um, just a quick question before we go to the the five million for the visit, that's not in year one, is it? We're talking probably year three or four. Uh, through the chair, the uh, the information we've received uh, from the uh, MCT twenty twenty one, uh, which for the five million to be spread over a period of time, um, we agreed that it, that wouldn't be putting any requirement on the next financial year, given the challenges that we have within this annual plan. So um, it, the proposal that's in front is spread over two years, um, starting in the, uh, uh, in the LTP period, the next LTP period. And, and a lot of the costs that are in there also are associated, not again with this year, but talking about the next three, four years. Correct. Okay. So we're, we are looking, just for clarification, we are looking at, not tomorrow, we're looking at what's going to be in, in the process in the next three weeks. <coughs> Practice the, the LTP process. Yeah. Which uh, the CE has just reminded me it's on page 257 of the funding uh, for the Any comments or questions? Councillors? Councillor Olsen. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Um, my question is if, again, this doesn't go through today, what happens? With this, the Does it just get completely binned? Yeah. Through the chair, that's yes. the information that we have. This is the, the government would no longer entertain the, the grant opportunity. And and I, as I understand, so it is dependent on that outcome. <coughs> um, okay. Um, so if this was such, so without that sixty million, can the developers not proceed? 
they, they absolutely need that 60 million. Uh, to the chair, uh, that's that's what we uh, the proposal that's, that's there. Obviously, Hospital Northland Trust is a trust, and, and it's a community group um, focusing in on that. So, without that 60 million, that kind of grant, um, it's dead. Would it need to be part of It's dead in the water. So, if this was such a good business and proposal, why? <coughs> so they could that. How do I put this? If, if, if this was private business and without the 60 million involved, they'd have to go to a bank, wouldn't they? And um, or seek private investment. So without the 60 million, they, they wouldn't consider it at all. Like it would just be absolutely dead in the water. Uh, the chair, I can't, I can't, or you can't, can't answer that. Okay. Some tough questions to answer here. Mm -hmm. Councillor yeah. Council Jovic. <clears throat> Am I able to propose amendment to this to exclude option one and include option two? Uh, there's, there's a direct opposite in this case, mm -hmm. Councillor Jovic. I'm just I'm just going to get a bit of clarification on that. It is a direct amendment, so no, that cannot be proposed as an, as an alternative motion. As an amendment, sorry. As an amendment. I'd like to speak to it. Um, yeah. Um, and in regards to it, I mean, this doesn't talk about a hotel, there's no promise on a hotel. I'm in business, so I've been to conferences, talking about East Australia, I was just in Sydney and Darling Harbour. You build a city around a core, and this is out on the limb. It's a nice site for a hotel, it is the wrong place for, for a conference facility. And um, I think Councillor Reid summed it up earlier, chocolate coated you. Thank you, Worship. Councillor Rocker. <coughs> um, thank you, Worship. I was just thinking about <clears throat> the potential. So, from my understanding, the first proposal, and I realise it's a completely different proposal, but the first proposal went through went out for consultation and it was around the potential rates increase to fund it. I'm just worried about the public perception of we're talking rates increases here currently, and then we then approve this motion. Um, around the public's perception of what, like what we've done, it seems like it will be. If I was in the public, it would seem awfully coincidental that they both happen at the same time. <coughs> so that that's just a bit too much. And Councillor, but that was the question I just asked earlier, and it's highlighting that the funds are actually not coming out of this this term; it's actually later on. Uh, it's, that was the main reason why I asked that for just Councillor. To try and differentiate the difference between the rates increases now and also <coughs> if this funding is the happen this one. Yeah. Thank you, Richard. Councillor Kenzie. Thank you. So in the original proposal that went out for long-term plan, the LTP consultation, I made a submission against that proposal. I had various concerns around um, sea level rise around the urban design quality of the building um, and around the level of WDC investment that was required in that proposal. This is a new proposal. It has the same name because the name was gifted from Hapu, so it was seen as disrespectful to change the name um, for a different proposal. So I can see that there's the potential for confusion from the public thinking that this is uh, the same thing coming up again. It's not. It's an entirely different proposal with a different um, request to Council. Um, those fears that I had have been allayed. So in terms of sea level rise, we went and visited the site and we stood on a platform that is well in excess of the NRC hazard maps that show predicted sea level rise for 100 year, uh, years from now. Um, well elevated above that level, uh, feel very comfortable about that aspect now. In terms of the active edges, which is an urban design term for um, activating public space by having um, retail and commercial um, aspects to a building, um, there is an entire mezzanine which will be populated with cafes and restaurants. It will overlook the water and that will be open to the public 
uh, in my understanding. So it achieves those um, urban design uh, <coughs> that we would be looking for um, to improve the public realm. Um, and in terms of the level of Whangarei District Council investment and the risk that we are taking on, it is an, again an entirely different proposal. Um, far less investment required in this proposal. We don't own the building, which is a major point of difference. So I just wanted to highlight that I was sceptical of the original proposal, but this and having the opportunity to investigate it, look at the financial projections, um, look at the design, um, I'm in support of this. This building will be a catalyst for future developments of a hotel, an apartment building, um, an electric ferry connecting uh, downtown to both Whangarei Heads and Marsden Point. All of these things will be hugely beneficial um, to the district and to the central city. Now, I campaigned on revitalizing the central city and this is an opportunity for us to make massive headway in doing that. I acknowledge the, um, the potential uh, perceived, um, the perception of the public may look at um, our agenda item from a couple of weeks ago with the proposed uh, rate increase. That, just to clarify this, due to inflation and Cyclone Gabriel, both of which we have no control over. Um, personally, I would like to see options looked at that minimise any impact on the rate payer, including selling assets um, of which we have $620 million worth of, in order to fund that $5 billion so that the, the rate payers aren't footed with this bill in years two and three as proposed. Um, yeah, I think that's all I had to say. Um, yeah, looked at it long and hard. I'm in support of the proposal given all the information that we've been provided with. Um, I just, I've got uh, Councillor Peters. Do you want to speak to it? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Um, thank you. Uh, I want to endorse uh, some of the previous speakers. This is a big picture step. And in that step, we have got allies, we've got collaborators. And I'm, I'm mentioning the Marina Trust, the Ford. NECT, they, they are all going to be working together to improve um, that central city area. I too had worries about climate change. I walked up on the top floor and I'm sure it's not going to, on the bottom floor where the, water, where the ground is going to be raised to. And in fact, this proposal will actually contribute to our ability to create higher sea walls. So that's really good. I'm, um, I also asked, uh, spoke to Accord uh, and asked them about um, how citizens who don't go to conferences will be influenced by this project. And they talked about weddings and uh, wedding venues and the ability to have uh, family parties and birthdays there. So that sort of thing, um, actually doesn't just affect people coming to the conferences. The conferences actually do, if people are staying and living in Whangarei and going to conferences, that will financially assist um, our, our opportunity to improve our income for this area. So um, I'm particularly interested in the collaboration and the, the way in which the conference centre, the apartments, the um, hotel, the electric ferry and other potential developments will, will affect that central city. So I'm speaking in 
support of this proposal. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, I'm just checking, Councillor, have you spoken? No. Just like Kenneth, I just asked you, can I clarify that? Before. That's fine, thank you. So, um, again, this is a question. We've just gone through the Handabasa um, issue and it not making money that it proposed to make. What happens if this is if we are left in the same, if we have the same scenario with this, that due to COVID, another lack, you know, another round of COVID, for whatever reason, if this doesn't make its projections, what happens then? Are we again left to, you know, to, to carry the can? Um, that's a good question, and I think you'll find it's actually highlighted in, in there. But Dominic, you might want to speak to this. Uh, through Chief, just <coughs> sorry, clearing my throat. Um, so we have obviously this new proposal with different ownership and operation structures. Um, Council's key exposure based on the proposal in terms of risk is around um, NECT's involvement as Council CCO and funding that we provide through there. So we've obviously tried to structure the recommendations to mitigate that risk. So obviously around the conditions of any lease. Um, and the funding that, that would go through NECT. Um, but we've also noted in the report that um, there is nothing preventing any party coming to council, any party for any proposal coming to council for funding at a later date. Yeah, okay, thank you, Dominic. Councillor Reid, and then Councillor Harvey. A couple of questions, thank you, Your Worship. Yeah. Um, <coughs> NRC and Marston Maribel. Uh, Councillor, um, I, I have to remind you any discussions of any other parties not listed in this agenda are in confidential. It's to do with the land ownership and rent. And I should have made that quite clear at the beginning. And my apologies about that, Councillors. Any people that are not listed in this agenda are not to be talked about. Because that is held in confidential. Can I draw your attention, Your Worship, page 254? Yep. Land and mixed ownership. Yep. Ask the holding the loan of the land. Yep. Can I ask yep. a question? So they, what are they bringing to the table? Is it going to be rent free? Or does a group who have to pay a rental? Uh, I believe that the staff have been asked that question. Uh, through the chair. Um, so we, we don't have the details of the lease arrangement between, uh, our proposed lease arrangement between Mark and Maritime Holding and Prosper Northland Trust at this stage. Um, but that would be the, um, as we've mentioned in the recommendations, working out the, uh, the, the lease and the sublease arrangements is, is, is a key next step that needs to be gone through. As a matter of transparency, that would have been in the document. Um, I won't speak to it at this time. And, and just for a point of clarification for also your question, um, you'll notice that um, 1A1, which it says uh, that the council approves on really going through the conditions of the terms of contract. So there's, there's still a, there's still a, 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 a loophole there, effectively, if the conditions are not met. Councillor Connors. Oh, sorry, Councillor Hardy. Hey, Councillor Hardy. Sorry, Mike. Got that, Councillor. Thanks, Mike. Statement. Previously, when this co pop has come to the Council, I've kind of pushed the issue around um, hapu engagement. And I was kind of concerned that it was, it was just kind of, you know, it was just a, a come out of a basis. The informal on site visit. Um, actually secured quite a lot of activity that they have undertaken on hapu and that um, uh, the local hapu kahu uh, they are actually uh, are very supportive of, of Oruku and, and the way in which they've, they've been engaged and um, but I guess on the other side of it which we didn't see and I didn't ask from Nick was that transition of engagement with hapu um, and so I guess um, we want we want to make sure that that, that continues. Um, understandably, it, it, it hasn't. So we want to make sure that that's streamlined. I guess I, I you know when I was thinking about the pros, you know, we don't own the buildings. We don't get stuck with the the, the maintenance issues. Um, uh, if it closes down, it's it's not ours. 
um, in Ari on the operational side, and to do with the CCA, we still have that operational risk. And I think that that figure of up to five mil for that fit out was something that we really sat uncomfortable with, with all of us. But I think the, the crucial words are up to. Um, that, that we can kind of uh, work around that. So, um, yeah, again, hugely conflicted around the um, previous consultation and the uh, feedback that came from the, the ratepayers. Um, but knowing that this particular document, as Councillor McKenzie has, has said, <coughs> is hugely different from the original proposal um, and how it looks like going forward. So. Thank you. Thank you. That's fine. Questions first, please. Yes. In the motion, item three and four state, that considered necessary by council based on the Does that mean there's a decision coming or is that based on the staff? <coughs> so uh, I, three eyes. Oh, three options, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Option. Option one and eight. Three and four. Within that space, what does that mean? Does that mean the council here will decide, or does that mean the staff will decide in the capacity that they do? I believe Dominic has an answer for that. So, if we go for down the recommendation, it delegates the chief executive to negotiate and approve funding agreements and lease conditions to including the limited to the conditions above. So, that delegation is included within the recommendation, and then further down from that, it notes that should further review of the assumptions and financials underpinning the proposal not be favourable, and that will be uh, upon assessment by the chief executive, um, this matter will be brought back to council. So, this is a, a substantive decision. Assuming that all of those stack up. I'll speak to it, please. This has been a very long process. This has been a very divisive process for everybody. I would just at first like to give the absolute kudos and support to the efforts that the trust and the people who are working with that have gone on the effort to do as much as they possibly have. The engagement that they've, that they've done, the support where we try to be included as much as we possibly can to be able to get this facility up and operating and the changes that's gone through. Fully acknowledge this is a completely different proposal than the previous ones. That being said, the information provided in the previous ones and sentiments from the public also come into deciding into my decision on this. Respect that it is the new proposal. Fully respect as well the fact that the location is the name rather than the actual building and that's been where it's been based around it. So as much as our communications and media have gone out with this, that, and the other, I mean this is roughly the same thing. It's because of the location and it shows that we need to improve our communications as well. I think it's an absolutely fantastic idea. I think it's absolutely awesome, personally. I love going to conventions, and it's one of those things that if it was there, I might go to one or two events at this location. I also appreciate the amount of public space that is being provided outside of it. That being said, I've heard a lot of people saying that they don't want to put the bill for this. And I can support that by saying, I don't want to pay for it either. I'm taking myself out of here and I'm listening to people in this decision making. <clears throat> whether it be from our taxes, from the central government coming through to do it, or whether it be through our rates. One thing I would like to point out, raise item 4.1 on page, sorry. 258 or 261. As the statement saying, regardless of the funding source, council is already anticipating that significant rates increase may be required for the long term plan due to three worth reform and council's continued reliance on capital revenue and its funding operating costs. This needs to be considered as part of all decisions relating to additional budget increases, funding commitments. Also, now this is just a paragraph out of it, it is something that needs to be highlighted. We were already hearing, and this is um, shown with a post that was put out on Facebook by the council last night, a lot of people concerning about the 
potential of the 7 or 10 percent with the addition of rates rise, let alone the potential of what the long term plan may have to be able to do. I fully respect and support everybody that has done this, but I don't think I can support it in this decision today. Thank you have a question? Question here. Yeah. Um, is there anything to prevent Council from funding the required up to $5 million through uh, sales of some of our building stock or property? Mm -hmm. So through there, don't have an answer on the specifics, but there are basically we have included a clause there, so we, we could work through options with council under section four point one. Um, we have included a number of different options that council could consider, and then we've noted in the resolutions that the mechanisms would need to be considered through the long term planning process for funding that. So we're certainly, we're going to have those discussions. With just council. to clarify, there is a pathway through this potentially where there's no impact on rates. Those would be matters yes. for council to there decide. There is potentially a pathway. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the question, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Cook, do you have a question or statement? Can we go talk to the motion? Yes. Your Worship. Thank you very much. I'd like to start off by um, acknowledging the work that the uh, people have uh, bought, uh, have put into this project to bring it to us. Thank you very much. Um, it, and also the commitment from Crown Infrastructure Partners to stay uh, connected to our city and uh, to show faith and, and give us this opportunity. Whether we take it up or not, it's totally up to us and that's sort of why we're here today, I guess. But there has been faith shown in, in our city and, and we are being given an opportunity, I guess, and often that's all you get in life is an opportunity. <coughs> If you want to make the most of that opportunity, it's entirely up to the individual, the organisation or the city. I'd like to address some of the comments that have been made around the room. Uh, firstly, <clears throat> there is that wonderful saying of a chocolate coated stone. And now, recently in the last uh, agenda it was brought up, and which gives me leave to discuss and Council Leo has brought it up in this, uh, conversation as well. The, uh, the Hundabasa, and we're using as an example of an investment in our future and the big picture that Councillor Benny talks about, since it's opened, has had 80,000 people come through it. That's 80,000. And our research as members on the, on the uh, Trust Board indicates that um, each member, each visitor spends about $250 while they're in town. So when councillors say it doesn't pay for itself, it is actually in fact wildly successful. The city gets about $20 million, I think, if you take 80,000 people and multiply that by $250, it comes out at $20 million. Trouble is, of course, it doesn't all go to the Wunderbasser, does it? It goes to the cafes, the shops, the service stations, the businesses around town, they pay rent to building owners, they employ people, and it comes back to our community. So I guess when you're looking at these things, you really do have to take that, that, that big picture look. Don't get stuck down in the, in the weeds. Look up, look up high. Now, for that return to our city, we have to put some capital in. That's how it works with these civic buildings and these social buildings. And we do the same for sports parks and uh, swimming pools and all sorts of things. The library, we put money in so that we get value back to our community. This is no different. This is us providing some seed money. So what are we actually putting in? The government is offering us $60 million and we are putting up to $5 million in, and then there'll be some operating costs. But as a capital investment, if we invest $1, the government will give our city $12 back. Now that's not a bad return. Uh, personally, it's the sort of thing that I might be interested in. In fact, I think I'd probably go for it um, as, a, as a businessman. 
And so it's sort of, to me, again, we've got to look. Now, it will have operating costs and there will be risk. And so we look at how the risk has been reduced to the council. And it's significantly reduced. This is a new proposal. Councillor McKenzie was absolutely right. The name has been gifted, so it has the same name, and that's about where it finishes. It happens to be a conference centre uh, on the same location. But that, and to all intents and purposes, those are the only similarities. So you look down um, at, at the, uh, on page 254, and it gives a great breakdown, as someone said, uh, Councillor Holst said, thank you to uh, Jim Sefton, our, our manager, for putting it like this. In 2021, it was a council-owned asset. Now it's not. It's owned by Prosper Northland Trust. Uh, we were going to be responsible for long-term maintenance. Now we're not. It's going to be a bridge. There is no bridge. We were going to be responsible for construction and funding risk of up to $57 million. Now we're not. Uh, the land was in mixed ownership. Now it's not. It's owned by Mars and Maritime Holding. There is going to be a marina and a ferry terminal. Um, and the operating expenses are limited. They were going to be five million, limited down to 650k. So there's the differences, and there's the opportunity that's been given us to us today. Has this city missed opportunities in the past? Undoubtedly. Does this city want to grow up, mature, and become something other than a rural service city? Does it want to add vision? Does it want to add depth? Does it want to build on the good work that's been done before and the investments that have been made? Or do we want to sit back and say, actually, we are too conservative? What this Point of opportunity? Point of order. Um, question and character of our, our fellow councillors. Councillor Yovich, it's a bit of a fast stretch what, what Councillor Cooper's implying oh, the uh, Councillor's... Insinu insinu in insinuation throughout the whole spiel has insinuated in terms of our outlook and, and not being uh, strategically focused. So I'm just questioning, questioning the character that has been raised by Councillor Cooper. Councillor Cooper, could you, when you rephrase things, could you phrase it so that you're not, you may not be inferencing the councillors particularly? Because I, I, I didn't take you in inferencing councillors particularly. Let me put it this way, Your Worship. Yep. I, I sincerely apologise to Councillor um, Jovic if he felt I was saying that he was too conservative or not. Let's put it this way. Do the people of the city want us to uh, have vision? I think the answer is yes. Do the people of this city have a proposal that has significant people and organisations within our city working together? The answer is yes. What it, who is working together? We've got the Master Maritimes Holding in, in here working together, significant asset um, a company within the, our city, great influence on the uh, income, potential income that we have. Uh, as a city and in our future growth. They obviously see potential in this. We have Prosper Northland Trust. Now the members of Prosper Northland Trust are not um, put down here, so I can't talk about them, but let's suffice to say that they um, are people with uh, a reputation and who have done things and who have standing in the community. So, Your Worship and the rest of the councillors, I suspect that here is an opportunity. They don't come along like this very often. It is up to us as leaders of the community to take this opportunity. It will be in our benefit and it does show vision. Thank you. And um, you did very well. I, I just got reminded of the five minute time limit. So you did very, very well. But because of the interruption, I let you carry, finish off your seats. I appreciate that, my friend Councillor Rio, but she needs on to finish. Not a problem. Um, Councillors, any other questions? Or Councillor Reid, you'd like to speak to this one? I'd like to speak. Yep. Yep. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, this is a huge commitment. And it's a massive piece of work. There's been, I don't know how many man hours would have, and lady hours would have gone into forming all these proposals that have come before us. 
and well done to them. Extremely well done. I just, I struggle because I hear so many things. We hear about sea level rise and, and we have that catered for. The other week we had sea level rise mentioned and a map put in front of us which showed a flood zone right up the valley at Bedlington Square, which is miles above those. Not miles, it's many metres above. So that just raises a little question in the back of my mind. Our town is splintered and it has become that way over time. And I will not apportion the blame because it's just a fact of life. We now have shopping malls and shopping areas that are not linked to our CBD. Our drive is to link the key with the centre of town. And by the centre of town, I'm taking in where we are now, Cameron Street, and that link right down through to the key. This is only going to put a branch on a tree that's got no leaves in the middle, no branches. Um, that concerns me. <coughs> As stated in these reports, and there's no guarantee of a hotel. We expect a thousand people to attend for a standing function. <coughs> Parking for less than half. Buses, ferries, yet fine. You try and put a lady in a pair of high heels and get her to hop on a bus and pour it rain, it won't work. Um, the land ownership. There's not enough detail in here for me stating how far they are prepared to go with the ownership of that land. Are they going to fund by what would be a rent as a direct contribution to this project? I figure not. We are talking in depreciation, possibly somewhere around three million over five years, and it's an ongoing thing. That will go for the life of the building, and, and I'm estimating possibly 70 years if we get that far. So this, if this does not stand on its own two feet, and because it will be linked through Northern Event Centre Trust and linked back to Council, I worry that shortfalls are going to come back and land in our lap. We have seen a case already this morning of exactly that. And I'm sorry, I, there, there are just too many variables and too many gaps in here. And it's fine to have that 57 million from the government and say it's, we're going to see money. I see it as a pre-purchase on a payment on a prop that is not yet proven. Um, so today, I, I'm afraid I cannot support this proposal in the present form. Thank you. That's the highest. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Your Worship. Um, so I, I'll try and be concise because we're, we're taking a lot of time. So first of all, I want to just um, acknowledge the amount of time and effort has gone into by the, the team that's developed this, both internal and external. Um, I wasn't party to the previous uh, proposal, so I'm, I'm just looking at this as it is, and I can see the amount of work and effort has gone into this, and I, and I think that that's to be commended. Um, I guess, if I'm going to look at the positives on this, um, clearly there's a big contribution from central government, and, and that's not to be ignored. We don't get this kind of opportunity very often to have um, cash from central government. And uh, there is a strong argument to take the money, make the best of it, and we'll work the rest out later. So I, I acknowledge that. Um, there is um, evidence that this will generate positive economic growth, which is, of course is a key uh, objective of this council. So I, I certainly support that as well. Uh, we have to have economic growth. It will tidy up a very untidy part of Riverside Drive, uh, which lets down the rest of the RTO loop. Um, um, so there's some significant benefits from doing this, this work there as well. Um, there is the possibility of a ferry service um, and a hotel, nothing guaranteed, but that would also be a major um, 
positive for the city. Um, it supports the Hunterwasser, and we've heard this morning we need to do everything we can to support Hunterwasser. Um, and I was very keen to see that the projection is based on domestic uh, guests travel only, not international. Uh, I think that's all to be good for this proposal. However, um, there are some there are lots of grey areas for me, which which really concern me. Um, there's the amount of money required from central government. This is a significant, this is a, a, a big grey area for me. And I've just reviewed the letter in the appendix from the Minister of Finance. Uh, we, we can't get, as it currently stands, uh, an accurate handle on what constitutes uh, a, a significant contribution. That's a grey area. Um, we, we come at this after the cyclone as well. We, we still don't have an accurate quantum, an accurate measure of what repairs post cyclone is going to cost the council and therefore cost the ratepayers. So we are approaching this against the backdrop of uncertainty in terms of our finances. There's also uncertainty around how any budget overrun would be funded because, as it says in the paper, um, across the Northland Trust. Um, is not financially able, on the face of it, to uh, support those overruns. And I think there's a high likelihood they would come back to council. Um, the projections around the business case, I've also got um, some concern over. Um, I am struggling to see, uh, as, as with councillor Jovic, um, what's the unique selling point for uh, to come into Fongera. Um, I've been to far too many conferences over the years and most of them I'm attracted to because they are a destination conference and with the best will in the world we are not currently in a position to offer that destination. Uh, I'd like us to be but we're not currently. Um, and of course as we said previously the hotel and ferry are not guaranteed. They've been mooted and I'd be a big supporter of both, but we, we mustn't get carried away in thinking they are part of this proposal because they're not at the moment. So, um, in summary, I think um, it's the wrong time for this proposal, coming as it does post-cyclone. I think it's the wrong location because we're not a destination location. Um, and I think, sadly, it's the wrong cost as well. So, on that basis, sadly, I won't be supporting it. Uh, Council, I, I just want to cover for a few, for a few things that have been said here. I, I appreciate everyone been commenting. Um, I think we first need to acknowledge the hard work that's gone on. With, you know, Council Holmes and a few others have, have acknowledged the hard work that's gone by the staff, and uh, Council Cooper acknowledged uh, Prosper Northland. You know, it's unusual for central government to hold on to a group of funding for such a long time, still prepared to offer it to Whangarei. I, I'm, I'm blown away by that, so I, I do take that it, Prosper Northern must have done a lot of work to keep that partnership and friendship happening for it to even get to this point. You know, and I, I look back at the previous minutes of July 2022 on page 270, which actually talks about and shows, and I, I remember moving the motion at the time, because it was, to me, was it was a low risk option. It was taking the risk out of the development contributions that were going to come, were going to be put towards the actual infrastructure which was required to keep the for, for the complex. So it was a logical thing. It was there was no cost to council. So when you look at this one here, the risks, and when we go through those risks that have been highlighted, because I know a few of us are all concerned about the risks, there is so many out causes within this. What concerns me the biggest is if central government once again say, oh, that's not enough commitment. Because that's where everything's relying on here. Our council has shown to the best ability with the least risk for its ratepayers every single time. And this time, again, is the least risk to the ratepayers. The only cost has been taken care of. That's not the there's, there's uh, you know, we're only looking after the furniture and fitt fittings. And again, that is normal of an entity which is running the complex. 
that is a normal thing for an entity to actually pay for, which is those, those fittings. And we've said up to five million. And it's not happening tomorrow, it's actually happening realistically when construction actually happens two or three years down the track. I know the, plan, the page on 258 talks about it and says what it is. Realistically, you don't start <coughs> buying stuff until you're actually getting to the point where you can actually put it in place. You know, that's generally the way you do things. Um, because you've got nowhere else to store it in the meantime. So the risk itself has been taken out for us. And when we're talking about, and I said the biggest catch here is central government, whether they change the goalposts again. So this more relies not on what we decide here, because if we, if we decide to vote for this, then we're turning around and putting the onus back on central government again and saying, okay, we're still here, Prosper Northland's still here, Prosper Northland's been still keeping, the keeping things going. Yes, there are other parties who have come onto it. So where are you, central government? Are you prepared to support Northland? Because that's where the issue lies here for me. In all the years I have been on council and out of council, I have seen very little investment by central government into Northland. This is one major investment. And it would be a serious thing if they just turned around and changed the goalposts again. To be honest, it would really piss me off. Because it's, it's actually something where this council, the trust, and everyone have been trying to make things happen. So I'm, I'm looking through the, the agenda here, I look through the item, I've listened to the councils, I've heard their concerns. For me personally, the risk has been taken out. I acknowledge Councillor Benny starting up with the mo we're talking about that the, the building is not the same building. Absolutely, it's not the same building. Because beforehand, we were, consistent, we were having to be a major part holder and actually own it <coughs> to take a full risk out of us. So we are actually de-risking it immensely for our residents and ratepayers. Do I believe the conference seat is going to be used? Absolutely, 100%. I can tell you now that I know of at least five conferences that we've missed in the last six months because we do not have a venue big enough. I know that. You know, uh, all the political parties want to have their, their conferences up here. All of them. Because they all love Northland. But they're not people for money, but they all love Northland. Uh, I know that we've got you know, different other business organisations which are wanting to put conference centres up here, or conferences up here, should I say, not conference, conferences up here. And they wanted to have it. And it's also, they're wanting to stay away from the big urban areas like Auckland, Christchurch, and Wellington. They actually want to go to the rural areas to, be, to actually bring income back into the rural areas. So for me, with the de-risking, with the supporting of our, of our CCO and making sure that the, the, the terms and reference and lease agreements are all double checked, triple checked, because I said there's still outs for us here, there's still outs for our staff if they feel they're, that they're uncomfortable with it. But the big thing is, it all stems down to central government and whether they are still prepared to put money into funding. And whether we've done, shown enough, and I personally think we have, we've actually bent over backwards to try and show them that we are actually supportive without having the risk in it. So for me personally, as I've read this agenda, it is very, from my side of things, it actually covers the risk very carefully and very considered, and actually puts us in a very great, in a very good standing for a conference centre, hotel if it comes, ferry if it comes, but do all benefits to Whangarei, to our district, to our people, so that income can come into our people. Because I tell you now, with having the Brendewins closed, that's a million dollars a day we're losing in Northland. Not Whangarei, Northland, by having those Brendewins closed. So we need places like this to bring people up in the boat fly, and then the boat fly. So, councillors, that's it. I, I'm, that's where I'm going to finish at this point. Councillor Hulse, I believe you haven't spoken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Worship. And uh, thanks for all the, all the comments. I won't go over a lot of the topics that have been covered very, very well by councillors around the table. But I just want to cover 
Go back to a few things to just bring up the spin again, because I had a really good look through it last night again and refresh my memory. This was a plan that was actually put together by a collaboration of business people, including the Chamber of Commerce, local Huckabee reps, and um, various people around town. But what it did is we say, we want to lift Mongaray. We want to turn Mongaray into a destination. And this came to be very, very successful as a catalyst to, to start that off. And one name, I was, I was chair of the first committee that set it up, and one time I had a nickname through the council doors here, Cyclone Phil, because I was blowing it hard to get things moving, and there's a fair bit of resistance, but I stuck in there and I'm still there. <coughs> so, so this basic plan transformed Wongray from a, from a service town into a destination, and which is, we've now got a slogan, so Wongray, love it here. Isn't that great? That's what our people are bought into. Wongray, love it here. It came about because in this plan we actually developed a new mall, we <coughs> developed new road layouts, we, de we bought four properties, turned them into car parks, and we de developed a town basin. It led to Tamata Poe, the Loop Walkway, the, uh, the Art Trail, and things like that, Kennedy Bridge. So what's, why is it important to do that? Because council invests in certain things to make things di a difference. We invest in sports, upgrade a Seminole Stadium, pay our share of that development. So we host World Cup games. You know, we're focused with the 18 region, this last Black Ferns tour, the World Rugby, Women's Rugby World Cup games that are hosted outside of the main centre. It's the only region in New Zealand. We invest in recreation, you know, Patahi Park, Springs Flat Development, Poly Island, Murakaka Sports Field. We've invested in infrastructure, you know, we are seen as an outline of three water support because we looked after our infrastructure. We put surge lines for protecting our coastlines. We put in bypasses like Carmo Bypass. We put in the speeding road link to Tikapunga. We built the Tamara Poe and the road across the old landfill to create an east west link to the city. Had we not done that, we would already be now. This is our time to invest in business and the people. Now just imagine if we had a, a proposal come to our infrastructure that we could get 85% subsidy, 85-90% subsidy to support infrastructure. Wouldn't we be grabbing it? Wouldn't we just say, how great is that? Because we'd go and get it. And so I didn't want to read the comment that the Minister of Finance has it's written here. Ministers were given, to, uh, sorry, the Wangaratu District Council withdrawn of support in, 2000, in November 2021 was disappointing to the ministers. At that point, we gave serious consideration to cancelling the project, but agreed that an opportunity should be given to see if there's a sustainable way forward. Now, most of the councils have spoken about some really good points there, some of the opposition of not all of the project, and some of it, but that's the idea right to do that. So the concerns were covered earlier. Who owns it has been covered. Who manages? We've got the North East Fence Centre Trust who has actually developed to handle situations such as this. We develop them with a commercial focus to be able to do this. They produced the Fritter Festival recently. They handled it the Rugby World Cup game. Did a fantastic job. So we know we've got people who can do the management and the operation. And the collaboration is what the, the government was asking for. Is there another way forward? The collaboration has been brilliant for this proposal. We've never seen it before. We had the Hunter Vasa go through a great campaign with the Easter Hunter Vasa and all that, but they end up getting the job done. But this time we've got some serious players working together to try and add value to our love here at Wongaray. And it's a district wide, it's not just the city, everyone benefits. So I'm just appealing to the council around here. You've got an opportunity to, to really consider the development and go forward one way with that lovely here camp slogan behind us. So I've never been a seat warmer, and I do not intend to be a seat warmer around this council chamber. <coughs> and I'm not here to stagnate the development. I want to see Bombay keep developing. And why I say that, since I've been a councillor, we've had 36,000 people move into this district. 36,000. We're no small town, no small district anymore. They are coming here, but we're putting attractions in here, making it worthwhile for them to come to this city and this district and north. That's how you get economic development. 
is to put attractions there so people enjoy their life. They actually got a lot of social places they can go to, restaurants, the businesses supporting them, and I want to be part of that movement. So thanks very much. Thank you. Councillor Olsen, please. One more and final question. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm struggling, I must admit, but my question is, so if we, if it's just $5 million that is requested from Council, and that is all, there's no guarantee, is there, that that is going to be all. So if it was just a matter of, of saying yes to the $5 million and there was no comeback on Council whatsoever in the future, then I'd, I'd be happy, but I'm, I'm not convinced that there's not going to be any comeback on Council in the future. So it's sort of a question, but it's more of a statement, I guess. Yes. Yes. Okay, <laughs> right, I've got a question, but I'm quite just, okay. just, just to point out, Councillor Olsen, it is actually stated in the order of all the costs. Okay. Yeah, I realise that, but yeah, it also says on page two five a four point two that the, um, it will be constructed by PNT with no funding contingency or underwriting requested by council. So that's the definition that I want. So anyway, but yeah. Councillor, question. Following on. In regards to the all the pieces joined together, whilst it may be a between this, is there a clear what it is between so that people can hear? Because we've had statements of saying it's 650,000, but it's per annum over five years. And then we've also got another five million up to five million. <coughs> so yeah. question is there. What is what is so everybody is aware. And those five yeah, figure. What is the figure? What is the final this, of this agenda? Between <coughs> two maximum. Councillor I mean uh, Dominic, did you wanna to... uh three chairs but there's three components to it. One is the five million up to five million yeah. to put out. Um, the up to 650k from year one of operation, and then there was a marketing and um, destination promotion component of 50,000 over three years that's been requested. So that's all spelled out in the table on page 257 of the hard copy agenda. So to be clear, then the 5 million up to 5 million plus 3.25 million plus 150,000 that brings us up to. Plus the on <laughs> plus the includes in, in yeah, day to day maintenance. So that's up to potentially ten under ten million. Is that correct? Right? Eight point four is what that comes out to be. Yeah, so right. <coughs> up to yeah. Up to because there is, you know, so and then one. and then plus the three. Yeah, because that's just my great concern in this and it's just to be clear, we're looking at the figure itself rather than just Parts of it. Yep. So the three is being taken care of by development contributions. Clarification there. The what you're at really asking for is the eight point four, the total amount of contribution by council. Yeah. So if, if you total up all that, I have Simon here doing mass calculations straight away, and this is eight point four million all up. If <coughs> again up to up to. Okay. okay. Council, here's your question. Yes, there's a question. Um, so the three million. Um, is is the uh, is the, the is the development contribution higher than three million? Uh, not as far as I well, it could, it could no, be because the no, hotel no, next door from them to no, us. Yeah. Well, yeah, the hotel next door is more development contribution yes. as well, so there is yeah. there are the chances that they may be quite a lot. Uh, so, so the chances are there's quite a lot of development contribution. Well, I've seen it. It's a figure that has to be determined at the time of construction. So, unfortunately, at this present moment, I can't give you an exact figure on that. Thank you. Thank you. Question? Yeah, just a question. Um, I was just a question around affordability um, <coughs> for just general public to use the property. I hate the point to be built there with like. The general population can't even afford to hire it. Are there estimates to how much it would be to hire the property that would be using those? I'm, if, I'm, if I'm just checking right, uh, Dominic's like shaking his head, Jim's shaking his yeah, head. Yeah, through the chair, we, we, I don't think he's got down to a lot of detail. Um, 
I think through the conversations we've had with the trust is that it is it's a community developed thing and, and there's certainly um, a desire from the trust that it, it will be accessible to the community. So uh, but we don't have anything but the proposal to give you I, I think the best way to answer that council is that that would be in the lease agreement mm -hmm. and that's something that the staff will have the ability to come back onto. Uh, I was just going to pull a point of order on, on the last four speakers, but in fact, you all had an opportunity to speak on it, but had your five minutes. Yeah. And yeah, well, I think you should put the right of the time. So. But the point of order is. Uh, <laughs> question. <laughs> I think we've had it, but sorry. Thank you. Councillor you have a question? No, it's in regards to NCT, the statement of intent is for it to be commercial. And we have seen that with the yeah. toll stadium. So okay. to That's clarify fair. things, it has the intent from statement. So the, the comments that were made for it to be a commute, I, I don't believe is correct, given the statement of intent and what's seen off stadium, which is part of the NECT. I, I appreciate so, that, Councillor Gavich, but I think the biggest thing here will come down to what the lease agreement actually says at the end of the day and what the arrangement has actually worked with uh, NECT 2021. Quarter of orders. Your point of order comes back to the NECT and the statement of intent just to be separated out between different facilities. How, just from a management perspective, is, is improper. And now we're siloing it. And point, you can tell you that your point of order has been made. Um, Simon, do you want to comment on any of that? Um, I guess it's for the detail to be worked out, um, but if it's um, set up to be commercial, then commercial, right? Mm. So I'm going to come back to Councillor Benny. Do you want to reply? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, some time ago, prior to, to my time on Council, Councillor Holson will confirm this that WDC identified this site as being ideal for a conference centre. What does WDC do, do about it? Not much. Um, so we have identified that site as being suitable for a conference centre. In 2021, we uh, created an independent trust, NECT 2021, to run our stadium. They are keen and excited to get in here. They are as good as anything in the country, our, our independent trust. They are one hell of a good trust that want to get in here. I put a lot of faith in them. Have a look at Auckland, Christchurch and Wellington. They have just built conference centres. Um, we talk about Whangarei not being a destination. I'm afraid it is a destination now. It never was, it never has become one. Prior to COVID, we had something like 70 cruise ships booked to come in here. That was cancelled. They will be back. We are now a destination. We have to expand on that. This will be the catalyst. This could be, we'll say could, but I'm saying will be a catalyst for a number of them. Cruise ships to return to here. An electric ferry, marina. One of the things that hasn't been mentioned is, is one of the, um, the, the, the catalysts is a, a, an ocean flight um, plane. Mm -hmm which will fly from Marsden Point to Auckland in 45 minutes. This will be the catalyst for things like that to happen. For our, it's, it's just, we've got to look beyond the, the one-off cost for us and the ongoing cost for operating. We've got to look at, if I was a, a local business or a contractor, I would be begging council to get on board with this. I think that's the one thing. This will create a number of jobs during construction and post-construction. Um, staff have done a really good job of putting a heap of safeguards in here for us regarding the lease. All these, all these comments about the lease. That is, we are safeguarded from that. I, I, this, I, I think they've done an outstanding job of putting those safeguards in place. And I just, we, we talk about overall, we will not own the building. End of story. That is, the, that is one huge risk that has gone from us. Um, so again, I, um, I, I, I urge councillors to look at the big picture. Okay, right of being in the head. We'll now put the motion. The division. Yeah. Waiting for someone to call the division. So can we have the division, please? All those in favour, please raise your right hand. Councillors McKenzie, Benny, Peters, Cooper, Harding, Pulse. Just worship the Those against? 
Olsen, Connor, Jokic, Very Lightning, Holmes, and Reed. Those are staying. That's the Rooker. It is Kerry. Yes. Sorry, I can't hear you. There for a little bit, but I just want to make sure get the, make sure the lady get all those figures counted properly. So that's fine. Um, councillors, at this point, um, I'm quite conscious that we've now well and truly gone over Councillor Harding's standing up time, but also I'm going to ask for us to move into confidential. So, can we have a move, please? Councillor Peters, move. Councillor McKees, seconds. All those in favour? Aye. Okay. Any opposed? So, we're now moving confidential. Give the time, enough time for the guy.